Hi, I'm Tim and I'm one of the leaders at JAM. Now last time I was with you we were looking at a series of Jesus' teachings called the Beatitudes and I talked to you about one of the teachings which was blessed are the meek. Well this week I'm going to look at another one of the Beatitudes again and this time it's where Jesus taught blessed are the peacemakers. Now to start with I want to just read to you a short Bible passage. It goes like this. One day Jesus and his disciples got into a boat and he said, let's cross the lake. They started out and while they were sailing across, he went to sleep. Suddenly a storm struck the lake and the boat started sinking. They were in danger. So the disciples went to Jesus and woke him up. Master, master, we're about to drown. Jesus got up and ordered the wind and the waves to stop. They obeyed and everything was calm. Then Jesus asked the disciples, don't you have any faith? But they were frightened and amazed. They said to each other, who is this? He can give orders to the wind and waves and they obey him. The disciples were amazed. They hadn't yet learned that Jesus is the only one who can bring calm to the storm, the only one who can bring peace into chaos. But it wasn't always to be that way. Jesus was preparing his disciples so that they too could be people who would bring peace. Where there was trouble and chaos, where there were homes where nothing except arguments and rows took place, where there were estates where people spent all their time shouting, where there were schools where people spent all their time fighting, Jesus was and is teaching his disciples to bring peace. Blessed are the peacemakers. I bet you like to make noise, but I bet most your parents like peace. But then I suppose if any of you have a brother or sisters or if you're around playing with your best friends and you're wanting to watch TV and they're making a noise, You ask them to stop because you'd like peace so you can hear the television and watch your programme in peace. Now, if we look at peace, we'd say the opposite of peace was noise, maybe irritation or conflict. And when we're in an environment which is noisy, where there's lots of irritation or conflict, that environment is usually very unproductive and no one is really happy. On the flip side of that, in an environment of peace, we find that peace brings calm, it brings freedom, and it's good for the body, for the mind, and for the spirit. Now, if we follow Jesus, he'll help you and protect you from losing that peace. See, if we follow him, he'll guide us and keep us out of difficult situations or environments which he doesn't really want us to be in. And he'll also guide us from stopping or saying anything that even though we may not mean it, it might cause conflict or an argument between you, family or friends. But you know, sometimes we're just in environments which are difficult which are argumentative or where there may be turmoil or conflict. And God allows us to be there. And even in those situations, we can find peace. Let me introduce you to somebody. Now, when I grew up and was younger, this lady was very famous and her name is Mother Teresa. Now, Mother Teresa worked with the really poor people, they used to call them the gutter people, in Calcutta in India. And it was a place where there was no security, there was very poor health, there was a lot of poverty and very lack of food and accommodation for people. It was a place where actually there was very, very little peace. And yet Mother Teresa worked in that environment and helped to bring a bit of peace to the lives of those who are suffering. But she just didn't go in and out each day to that area, she lived in it. And that's where she found her peace, even though there was conflict around her, because she was called by God to serve in that place and serve those people, she found peace and didn't want to be anywhere else. 
you know, in difficult situations, wherever it is, as Christians, we know that God has the power to bring peace into our lives, just as he did for Mother Teresa. And just as he did in that story that we read when those disciples were in that boat, the storm and the waves were lashing around. They were getting worried. And yet Jesus had the power to calm the storm and calm the waves and bring peace to them in that boat. Now, just as he used that situation to demonstrate his power, he did it because he was preparing his disciples for ministry. He was preparing them for when he was going to go up to heaven and they were going to go out and spread the word of the gospel um, across the world. And, you know, if we give our situations over to God, he'll use them also to prepare us for his works and to prepare it for our good. You know, Hebrews 12, 14, another passage in the Bible says this, strive for peace with everyone. So over the next few days, I would encourage you in every situation, even if you feel angry or even if you feel sometimes that you're wronged, do everything in your power to bring peace. Because if you do, you will be called a child of God. And what I would also encourage you to do is just to thank God for the peace that you enjoy and that surrounds you on a daily basis. Not to take it for granted, but to be grateful for what God does and has given to you. Well, it's been good to talk to you. I hope these next few days for you are peaceful. May you be blessed. Until next time. Bye bye.